Organ donation is such a selfless decision. It's probably the greatest expression of love that you could express to another person. Because you never expect that this is a decision you're gonna be faced with. But the reality is it happens. Someone gave me a second chance at life, you know. You're about to meet a group of courageous families who will move you in a profound way. These are their stories about giving and receiving the most precious gift of all, life. I like to play video games. I like to uh, play basketball, baseball. Really, there isn't anything that he doesn't enjoy doing as long as it's active. He's kind of an old soul. He's very wise beyond his years. After we had done the biopsy, we sat down and had a long conversation with Dr. McGarry. In our mind, all along, we had anticipated that we were probably going to have to amputate the arm. Um, he told us, um, after he did the biopsy, that basically there was a chance if they could get all of the cancer and have clean margins all the way around, that they could potentially do a transplant. Hour six, the phone rang and uh, the surgical nurse said, I have really, really, really good news. And after three reallys, she isn't gonna tell you she amputated your son's arm. We waited for Chase to come out of uh, post-op and he come around the corner and out of the corner of his eye, he didn't even move his head, but he just said, look, mom. And he rolled his fingers like this. And five fingers moved. Chase uh, received the bone from a 56-year-old female. So if you can imagine a 56-year-old female. In a 10-year-old body. Saving, you know, bone. saving the right arm of a then nine-year-old boy. And to look at that arm and see what he can do with it now and to know that that person potentially lives on in him and will the rest of his life. Michelle often refers to Chase as an old soul. Now he truly is an old soul because he's got the bone from a 56-year-old woman who had the forethought to think, I want to help somebody else. And that truly really is a blessing to me. He was amazing. Take the shirt off of his back type of kid. Um, he was always one who, the jokester, um, He was someone who could uh, could do anything, anything he put his mind to. Um, our story's a little tricky. Um, he uh, decided suicide was going to end his existence on Earth. The point at where the, the doctors came to us and and asked us if we were, were okay with okay with donating the organs, we knew the right answer and we knew which direction we were going to go. But it was so final. Um, it was a final moment for us, and, and uh, it was hard, but we knew, that, knew the right thing to do. Through the whole process, Nebraska Organ Recovery was so kind and considerate of our feelings. You know, they kept checking in on us. They kept us informed of, of, you know, how it was going finding recipients. The kidney recipients were both grandmothers. A young father received the pancreas, liver, and intestines, and then uh, an eight-year-old boy received his heart. I think a lot of people are scared of it. And the reality is, is that your loved one does not need it where they're heading. And what a precious gift to give, knowing that you helped. Even though in your darkest hour, your grief, you will find comfort and hope in what, what you, you gave. I'm married. Uh almost been married for 25 years to a wonderful man. Judy is uh, the angel of my life. When I'm in the kitchen with him, watching him bake, I tend to say, oh no, you shouldn't do it like that. So I try to stay away. I had never heard of dialysis before in my life. I was in my middle 20s when I was diagnosed with kidney failure. I want to say it was maybe about six maybe six or seven months after I was on hemodialysis that I you know, got on the transplant list. She knew that sometime, someday, it was going to be her turn. 
and uh, she just had the strength and the wherewithal to, to live with the situation until that time came. The family who I had received the kidney from, it was their daughter, and she had died in a car accident. The opportunity for Judy to be the recipient of this young woman's kidney, whose life came to a very tragic end. I'm so thankful to the parents of that young woman. Words can't explain how helpful you can be and how thankful the other person will become. He was very conscientious. He was a perfectionist, very competitive, wanted to be the best, um, but, but had a big heart. He was awesome, about the best big brother anybody could ask for. He continually raised the bar in terms of expectations and, and just what he did. I mean, he had, <clears throat> I mean, had a lot of accomplishments. Once they did say, Basically, he was brain dead. Have you thought about organ donation? And, you know, we said yes. But he had also, when he was 16 and got his driver's license, um, that's where it all started, because you have to fill out the paper and all that stuff. And he asked me, I was with him, he said, Mom, what, what do you think about this? And I said, it's not what I think about, it's what do you think? And I explained to him how it kind of worked and whatever, but, you know, Organ donation at that point was not something we really thought about a lot. I mean, I'm not sure if many people really think about it until you're in that situation or somebody you know is in that situation. Um, but anyway, he said, well, yeah, I think, I think it would be stupid not to. I know a lot of people have actually told me that when I turn 18, I'm checking that box. It's the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find that box, I'm gonna check it. I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, because of your brother, that's the first thing I'm gonna do when I renew my license. You know, he lives on in six other people, and he has saved six other lives. But not only has he done that, but he's impacted hundreds of people. But just part of him is still living, and, and that is, is very comforting. Each year, thousands of people die while waiting for the organ or tissue transplant they desperately need to save or improve their lives. A single organ donor has the power to save the lives of eight people. One tissue donor can improve the lives of more than 60 people. Another name is added to the list of Americans waiting for life-saving transplants every 11 minutes. We got a second chance on life, and not many people get second chances. Organ donation is such a selfless decision. I don't know why anybody would not want to do it. By learning more about organ donation, signing your driver's license, and joining the registry, you make it possible to give the most precious gift of all, life. For more information, visit nedonation.org.